Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This video presents the 10 tips and tricks which we can use in our day-to-day -day UiPath automation. This is the part 2 of the tips and tricks. In case you haven't watched the part 1, I'll put the links for the first part in the descriptions and you can refer that. Now let us see what are the 10 tips which we are going to see today. So let's get started. As a good practice in automation, we tend to clean up the environment by killing all the open applications or whenever the process is stuck, we just kill the process. Now with the traditional kill process, there was a problem. In case excel.exe is being used by more than one user, for example nd001yn, now if we try to kill the excel with the help of the kill process, this might kill process for all the users and for all the sessions. To overcome the problem, developers used to write a long code like this where they used to get the current user, get the current session and then kill the process. Now with the latest update in the kill process activity, if you will go to the properties, you will have one more target which says applies to. From the drop down, you can select where you exactly want to kill, only for the current user or only for the current session. So that save us writing from a lot of code which is seen on the screen. Once the development is completed in UiPath Studio, we have two options, either to publish the packet to the orchestrator or to the custom feed. So how do we publish the packet to the custom feed? We just go here in the publishing option. I just select here custom, provide the part in the custom URL and hit publish. A nugget package is successfully created at the location. Now assuming that I want to get the code out of the nugget packet, how can I do that? You just have to go to the nugget, right click, rename. Change the dot .nupkz to dot .zip, hit enter, select yes, open the extracted folder, inside lib, net45, you will see entire project which we have made the nugget of. This can be used in situation when you have to debug a process and you only have the nugget package. Go to the play store, search for UiPath Orchestrator. Hit install. Once successfully installed, click open. It will navigate to the UiPath Orchestrator app. Click on get started. Hit OK. I am using Automation Cloud. I will click on that. It will navigate to cloud.uipath.com. Sign up with your account and you will be navigated to the dashboard. Now here you have different options available such as I can always go ahead and change the team from default to the light team same as in orchestrator. You have an option to go to the workspaces change the default folder for example I can switch my folder here and now if I simply go to the jobs you will see all the job. Let's try to execute a job on the machine which is available in the background. I'll click on the new job select the process that is called the ECMA process and click on the start job. Once the job is started, you will notice the UiPath Assistant getting fired up in the machine. I have set the job, so the fired up, it has fired up a message. It will type the credentials which are getting fetched from the UiPath Orchestrator. It will type in the credential, hit in the login button. Once the login is successful, it will simply go to the healthcare, download the daily appointment, extract all the data and store it in a location. Now if you'll notice in the orchestrator app, the job is status is successful. That means the job has been completed successfully. I have an option to go and view the logs. So all the logs which are generated by the process are available. This is my UiPath assistant and I have two processes available here. As you can see, I have hello world and the ACME linear process. One way of triggering the process is we can always go to UiPath assistant and click on this button. So this is just a program which will just display a message as hello world like this hello world I am a message box now do I have an alternative to run the process yes I do have you can always go to the process go here and here you have an option which says send to desktop now as soon as you click on this guy a shortcut has been created for hello world and you can fight it on your desktop hit ok so in the background now I am in my desktop this is my desktop and if you notice that the program has created a shortcut now simply I can go here and double click on this so this has started the execution and now it should give me a pop-up that hello world I have a message box we have one more option here so if you'll just go here and click on the show process details 
you can assign a shortcut key like this so i will just go and i press shift plus q and i click on save so that will just create a shortcut key for me to start the process so what i can do is i can simply go to my keyboard and press shift plus q and if you'll see the process has been triggered so these are the different ways to trigger a process from your path assistant why do we need cron expression Assuming that I have to schedule a process on Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 11 a.m. in the morning. So this is a fixed time based scheduling. I can always go to orchestrator triggers and specify weekly and specify Monday, Friday, Wednesday and specify the time. But now assuming that I have a business set of users who wants the process to run in October, November, December at a specific time, let's say midnight approximately at 11 in the morning in the day 22. Uh, midnight and 11 in the morning how do i do that so i cannot do it with the traditional triggers so that is where the cron expressions come in picture where do we write cron expression in the same tab if you will see there is a last option which is called advanced there we have to specify the cron expression what exactly is the cron expression this is the format of writing a cron expression for the example which we are giving so this is the cron expression what we have right right so the next run date as per the date will be now october 15th october 22 and november 15th so this now orchestrator will run the job at the schedule in the orchestrator i go to triggers and in the time triggers if you'll just scroll down you will have an option to select the advanced so this is the place where we have to write the cron expression UiPath has already provided us with code snippets that are ready to use. You just have to plug and play. Where can I find it? You simply go to your UiPath Studio, click on the snippet. You will notice that there is already a code which is written for putting the delay. So for example, if you have to put a delay of 5 seconds, you simply have to drag and drop this one. Assuming that you are writing an automation for an orchestrator process and you want to start a job and resume after completion, you can use this one. If you want to suspend and resume after one hour, you can directly use this XAML. And this is already in built in studio. You just have to drag and drop it here. There is also interesting snippets available for the loops. If I just expand, if you notice that for each children, for each collection, how do you iterate through tokens? Repeat with counters. Now, as in sample, you there are advanced such as the counter example, filter collections using link queue. All you have to do is simply click on this and drag in your workflow. Assuming that I want to iterate a list of folders. So I simply go to the loops and here I see for each file. I double click on this. And if you notice that this entire code is available that how do I iterate folder. I am in my UiPath Studio with a version of 2021.4.3 and I have a project open in front of me. Okay, so I have added certain dependencies to the project. Let me go ahead and add a new sequence. I call it sequence number two. I'll hit create. Now, if you remember in the previous version of UiPath Studio, we had only one option, which was called the remove unused variables. But now for the better project organization, UiPath has provided with other options as well. Variables, workflows, arguments, dependencies, imports and screenshot. How does it work? Okay, let me go here and select remove unused dependencies now uipath will run and it will show me all the dependencies which i am not using so pdf and word that means i'm not using any activity in my project from these packages i click ok and the dependencies are gone how cool is that similarly if i go here and i say remove unused workflows again uipath says me you want to remove unused workflows i say ok and it has removed the similar thing is available for dependencies, screenshot, imports, variables and arguments. Go ahead and try these options. Many times while doing the UI automation with UiPath, we all have a requirement to minimize or maximize the window. Today we are going to see how we can do that. This is my UiPath studio. To minimize that, I will go to the activities, drag and drop an activity which says get active window. This activity will retrieve the current active window and if I now have to simply minimize it, I will go here and take an activity which is called minimize. Now if I go and simply run the automation, as you can see the browser is now minimized. Similar to minimize window, we have something which is called maximize window. Let me drag and drop it here. As you can see in the background, the website is now in a minimized mode. 
if I go here and run the file in the background you can see the application is maximized maximize window can now be used with Excel application scope to maximize the Excel in case of browser you can also use the maximize window in the attached browser to maximize the window while writing any automation in UiPath studio there is always a need to get the resources from UiPath orchestrator the resources could be queue name the assets or anything for example I am in the admin folder and I can see I have three assets created now in my UiPath studio I not necessarily always go to the UiPath orchestrator to get the resources name one easy way is to go to the resources here at the top and you can see I have all the assets ACME credential config path I have a queue which is ACME queue I have a process all these process are available so in case if the assets are already created there is some queue which is created and you want to check that how many processes are there which is the queue name what are the assets name you can always go here and refer this now if I just add a new asset I'll call the asset temp asset provide the value hit create now if I go back to my UiPath studio all I have to do is click on the refresh button and you can see my temp asset is now available for me to have a reference one more interesting thing about resources you can always go to the resources directly click here it will navigate you directly to the queue page I have an automation where I have to select these menus take an attached browser activity point it to the screen take a click activity point it to any of the item let's say accounts click on the three dots and select edit selector now if I notice the selector you see that AA name is something which is identifying the elements now if I want to identify the vendors all I have to do is simply go here and change this attribute to vendors click on validate and highlight so I can uniquely identify the vendor click on save click OK now this selector what I have created will always click on the vendors now let's say there is a variable in my program which instruct me that what item has to be selected for example reports click on the edit selector the part which is changing which is this guy you just have to right click on it choose the variable select the variable and hit ok and the beauty of UiPath it will automatically select the variable for you now you can click on validate and highlight and it is selecting the reports that means now I have introduced a variable in my selector now let's say I want to click on this bank all I have to do is change this variable to bank and this variable this click activity will work accordingly mm -hmm.